In today's video, we are trying out a few new experiments sent in by you from a Blossom video. Let's put these to the test. Guys, in the past, we have done a few different videos debunking some viral stuff that's been online, and several of these have come from one source, a company called Blossom. They put out a lot of videos. Like a lot. Uh, life hacks, like so weird many. chemistry experiments, some things that are just like weird decorating tips that I don't know if anyone would want to try, but that's fine. They can make whatever they want. However, some of what they've shown has been an outright lie. It's been presented as though it were factual and real, and it's completely made up and fake. And you so can't make diamonds out of coal. You can't make a perfectly clear seashell. There's a lot of things that are just not real, guys. Here's the basic idea. We have several experiments that we want to try from a new Blossom video. A lot of these seem like they're actually going to work, but they don't give you an explanation. Let's see if we can explain. I don't know how long ago they put out the video, but people started sending it to us maybe four weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they said, oh, you gotta try all of these. They look impossible. And I watched through it, and I thought, I think most of those actually do look possible. Uh, but then people kept on sending it to us over and over, and. I thought maybe not all of them worked, and I thought maybe they had cheated a little bit on a couple of them. So we're gonna try a bunch of them, and we're going to see if they're real. This, I believe, okay. was also the first video yep. in at least the cut that I saw. Uh, the idea was that by rubbing a comb on a balloon, mm -hmm. you would generate static electricity. The comb would become charged with static electricity, and then you could bring the comb near a thin stream of water, and it would actually deflect the water coming out of the faucet. It would just bend out of the way this way with the teeth toward it. That's where all the static builds up. Let's see if that's enough. Oh, look Not at that. I'm, I'm inches away and it's already starting to move just a bit. Wow. Yes, You're right, okay. the, bigger, the bigger teeth on the comb works way more. Uh-huh, move it down so you can see that curve. Here's a fun fact, the word electricity comes from the Greek word for amber because they discovered that rubbing things like fur against amber generated static electricity. So yeah, this one is very simple, very easy to do at home. It's pretty cool to show off static electricity. So this one's real. Good job, Blossom. All right, you picked the last one, so I'm gonna go with... A jar full of chain. Jar full of chain. This is a wonderful example. Well, not as it sits here, but this is what we need to demonstrate a really good example of the mold effect, I believe. I think that's mold. how it's pronounced, I'm mold. not sure. He was the one who actually brought it to public attention. With a video in 2013. Yes, Steve, so... Steve Mold, unless I'm pronouncing your name wrong, in which case I apologize, Steve. So this does something called the Chain Water Fountain. And the videos that you see online are really freaking cool. But I didn't realize just how easy it was to actually... Make it work. Basically, because I had been sitting here just trying to get the chain into the little tiny jar. This was sitting on my counter in the evening. And after I had filled... It's actually in a cup at that point. I filled it up and I was like, okay, I'll leave a little piece out, you know, just so that I know where the end of it is. Let me explain how well that works. It likes to escape. It escapes everything. <laughs> so let's show you what it looks like when we so, drop it from a distance. Yeah, right there, it was siphoning itself mm -hmm. out, but because it was only falling this far, it only had so much weight pulling down on it. So you weren't getting the full effect out of it. In most videos that I've seen online, people have it focused on the jar and the jar doesn't really move. The jar, the glass, whatever you have the ball chain in. I was playing around with this and I moved the, the jar back and forth and up and down, doesn't affect it. So let's show you. Oh. Works pretty good. It's pretty cool. Just gotta make sure that the chain goes in like from one direction. Mm -hmm. You can't just like grab it and throw it in. You have to just lower it down on top of itself. But if you do that, it works. Like there's, there's no trick, there's no secret. It's half ball chain. And as long as you feed it in correctly so that it's not like jumbled up in there, it's all just stacked on top of itself, it's gonna work. That small pile there is 40 feet of ball chain and it took what, a few seconds? Yep, it goes quick. 
pretty cool. Our cameraman and I were playing around with whether or not you could catch the chain in the cup and then just fire it off again. And we uh, discovered how to make the double, double waterfall. Oh, I missed. No, get it, get it, get it. There we go. <laughs> it can land in one cup and just kind of bounce back out <gasps> the other side. Oh, fun times. We're gonna play around with that more in the future. For the next trick. We've actually already done this trick. <laughs> Wasn't that neat? Glad we bought CDs On for to that. the next one. Here we go. All next right. up, again, this is, uh, we've actually, on this channel, done this before. A long time ago, Grant showed, I think it was in like restaurant hacks or something like that. Something like that. This idea that you can take forks and a toothpick and make them balance really nicely. And you jam them together until the time starts sort of Making apart. horrible noises. So restaurants really love it when you do this, guys. Yeah, we just went out and bought some really cheap forks. In the video, they managed to balance a toothpick on another toothpick. They had their center of balance lined up right at the very end of the toothpick. That really has to do with how far the forks are bent. So that has the same basic principle as a balancing eagle. It just kind of chill. You guys have probably seen these in toy stores. In the Blossom video, they show some cups about this size. The ones they're using are like that frosted. In the video, what they do is they put one cup into another, spinning it, and then it kind of keeps spinning for a second. Whereas oh, you had it. That was it. A little bit. Um, and then while it's spinning, it. they go. blow in the side and it like pops up and lands in the other one. These don't spin quite as nicely as some brands, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Woo! Third try! All right. Okay, that was, I apologize for uh, the uh, blowing out the mic there, but we did it, we're done. I thought we were gonna have to like use these other Holy start lighter cow. weight. Because these can kinda go a little overboard maybe. So the video showed putting a ruler on the side of the table and sort of flicking it and it vibrates. And then they showed moving the ruler into brighter light and doing it again. And suddenly it looked like the ruler was just like instead of vibrating quickly. In the video, they called this the rolling shutter effect. That's actually technically not true. So while we're going to try to demonstrate the difference between the lower light and the brighter light and how it appears on camera, uh, the rolling shutter effect is something else that happens as a camera trick that doesn't directly relate to the ruler. So by changing the lighting, can we see both the blurred bouncing version and the sort of slow rolling version? Yes, uh, adjusting both the light and the shutter speed. We get different results based on how much of the ruler we can see moving and if the period of the ruler moving happens to sync up more with the shutter speed. So for the next thing that we're gonna do here, we are going to make a cup of smoke. This particular video showed where you take some matches, you roll them up with a pencil, and then you put that tube of foil into a frozen cup. And then the smoke sort of blows down into the cup. Now, smoke is a particulate, so what's gonna happen is that it's going to hopefully sink when it hits the, uh, the cold atmosphere of the cup. So let's see. Um. I think maybe I should have had more layers of foil. Well, something's already coming out of the... Uh... Yeah! Okay. All right. So Magic that's what fired. it looked like in the video. Here is something that Nate pointed out. There's sort of this suspicious cut in the video at this point where it looks like it stops real quick and then the cup is full of a little bit more smoke. Now that could be that they're trying to let the smoke cool down. Mm -hmm. Also could be that they might have dropped a small piece of dry oh, ice in to get like a lot of good, really cold vapor. Yep. Okay, we are pouring the smoke. It's not moving quite like it did for them. It's absolutely doable. They dramatized it, which a lot of videos do, and that's okay. It is something very simple and very safe to do at home. Frozen cup, just put it in your freezer for an hour or so. Uh, Foil with adult supervision if you need an adult. Foil is very dangerous without an adult. To be fair, I still need an adult a lot of the time. 
So for our last experiment, this is the one that I believe you were the most interested in. You take a bone, you put it in vinegar for 24 hours overnight, they say, and then when you take it out, it's bendy, it's squishy. So it's kind of like when we put eggs in vinegar, you get that sort of soft shell. The idea so, being um, it dissolves the calcium yes. and then everything that's left keeps its shape but isn't so rigid. So I want to try this with both raw chicken and cooked chicken for the bones. So if you'll go ahead and uh, take care of this one for me. Thank you. All right guys, so it has been not one but two days since we put the chicken bones into vinegar. Let's see what they look like. So this is the uncooked one, but okay, okay. So, so let's take a look at that. Parts of it, that's not all cartilage. Some of this is kind of bendy, but it wasn't overnight and it certainly isn't the way it looked in the video. It works, ish. Let's try the cooked chicken bone. And about the same. Not very bendy. Oh, gross. In the video, guys, it looks like he's holding a piece of rubber when he squishes it. This is sad. The cartilage feels like it's bending, but not the bone itself. So, can you make a rubber chicken bone by putting it in vinegar? I'm gonna go with yes, but absolutely not in the amount of time they said if you're using the same size of bone that they are. I would assume they left it for maybe three, four days, maybe even a week. This particular video with Blossom and other things that it was compiled with, most of them works. Uh, all of them have elements of truth, as a lot of things do that trick you. However, this one I would say was more real than other ones. But again, you know, always check your sources. Don't believe everything you see on the internet. If there's anything else that you want us to debunk or prove, let us know in the comments below. I was! <laughs> Guys, uh, that's not all. You know we've always got more for you to see. Hit that box up at the top for our most recent video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.